Hey traders, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. If this is your first time joining me, thank you for checking me out. I try to keep these podcast episodes short, sweet, and very informative. But I am a professional currency trader. I am also a trading coach over at tier1trading.com. And this is a podcast that I release uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for your listening pleasure covering a handful of topics. Uh, The main topic is usually centered around trading, but we also try to talk more about uh, self-help, motivational stuff, psychology, entrepreneurship, anything like that. I got to apologize for my voice. My nose is completely clogged. That's why I've, uh, I've seemed very nasally over the last couple of episodes, but we've had up and down weather here. Uh, We've gone from 90 degrees, that's like 60 degrees today. So every time that happens, I get hit really bad by the algae bug. Now today I want to talk about a pretty cool topic. I'm going to read you guys an article by Brian Resnick uh, titled, Why Willpower is Overrated. And This comes at uh, the perfect timing, right? We're we're coming off of a July 4th holiday here in the U.S. where we get to blow stuff up and go to cookouts and eat, 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 eat all weekend. And if you've been following my journey, my podcast, uh, or just me on a regular basis on the social media, by the way, follow me over on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, the Twitter, right? At Akil Stokes RTM. I'm a pleasurable follow, I like to believe. Um... I've been trying to shed a few pounds, right? I've been trying to get back into uh, really, a, I'm always in good shape, but I'm trying to get back into what I call competitive shape. I'd love to uh, compete in a few high-level meets, maybe make uh, the American team, uh, and maybe perhaps compete at nationals. And to do that, I've got to shed probably about uh, five pounds. And uh, I was doing a good job of that. Uh, I then hurt my back, right? I had a a very, very bad back strain where I was essentially uh, stuck on the ground in a prone position for about uh, two days straight and uh, haven't worked out for about a week. So the, the, the pounds have come back on. You add that to the fact that, again, 4th of July holiday, lots of barbecue. And well, if you've ever been to a barbecue, I don't know if my friends are the same as your friends, but the first thing that happens when you go there is they shove all of the food in your face. And I went to a barbecue yesterday with my wife. We have a, my kid got, uh, he's friends with, they, they have twins and they're Puerto Rican and, you know, oh, Puerto Rican food is delicious. So I come in, I meet the guy, I said, hey, it's the first time meeting him. Hey, my name's Akil, I'm Jaden's dad. Nice to finally meet you. First thing he says, he shoves a plate, right? Gives me a plate and says, here's the hamburgers. There go to ribs, there go to shrimp, there go to rice, there go to cookies, there go to cake, there go the other ribs, there go the mac and cheese. And I'm like, no, I planned on having maybe a hot dog and like a salad. And uh, well, it, it took a lot of self-control not to just feed my face with everything. I had to tell him no. Um, I did have the ribs twice, which are really good, but it could have been worse. Let's put it that way. I I could have been hovering around that cake and cookie uh, section just... So that's why this this episode works perfect because I'm I'm dealing with this kind of battling with willpower, battling with self-control in my regular life. And I also deal with it on a regular basis with the traders that I work with. And I, I, I deal with it too as a trader. Let's, let's not put that aside. I have been a professional trader for a while now. I have been a consistently profitable trader for a while now. But understand, I still deal with the same issues you guys deal with. Um, I just don't, you know, I'm, I don't make those mistakes, but I still go through those battles. So let me read you this article. It's not gonna, it's not gonna read you the whole thing because it's, it's rather long. I'll put a, a, a link in the show notes below so you guys can check it out. Uh, but I, I wanna read, read it to you first and I'll go back and relate it to how it, it, it affects us as traders. However, bef- before we get into it, um, the title is Why is Willpower Overrated? And the sections I'm gonna read you is gonna go into the difference between kind of willpower and self-control. And I don't know about you guys, I always thought they were the same thing. I always thought willpower is just another word for self-control, but they, they are slightly different. And from, from what, I, what I found from the article, just doing a little bit more reading on the topics as well, is that 
Willpower is more of an attitude like, no, I just won't do it. Like, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to tell it. I'm just going to tell myself no, and it's going to happen. Boom. Where self-control is more of like embracing the situation and then steering yourself around it. So I guess it's the, the difference between just kind of like snapping your fingers. Boom, it's not going to happen. I have willpower, right? Versus kind of accepting the fact that, yes, there there is temptation here. I, I do want to make this decision, but I'm going to control those feelings and not do it. So, you know, it tomato, tomato, but there is a slight difference there. All right. So, again, the article is titled, Why is Willpower Overrated? by Brian Resnick. And he starts off by saying this. People with a lot of self-control, people who when they happen upon a delicious food they don't think they should eat, seemingly grin and bear the temptation until it passes. Have it easy. But why? For a long time, the thinking was that these people are good at inhibiting their impulses, that they have a lot of willpower, and they know how to use it. People who are bad at resisting temptation, meanwhile, supposedly have insufficient or underexploited willpower, a view with deep cultural and moral roots. Think Adam and Eve as the original sin. It's also deeply embedded in the pop psychology of reaching goals and self-improvement. People are the happiest and healthiest when there is an optimal fit between self and environment. And this fit can be substantially improved by altering the self to fit the world, argued the influential 2004 paper uh, that proposed a questionnaire to rate people on self-control. But this idea that people have self-control because they're good at willpower is looking more and more like a myth. It turns out that self-control and all the beliefs from it may not be related to inhibiting impulses at all. And once we cast aside the idea of willpower, we can better understand what actually works to accomplish goals and hit those New Year's resolutions. And the article went in to do a, a whole bunch of tests and explain it. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, again, I'll, I'll attach the link underneath, but it was like <laughs> two hours of reading worth of text. Maybe not that. Maybe I read slow. Maybe like 15 minutes, but it was a lot of reading. But I'll, I'll skip to the end of the article where he said, uh, kind of drew out some conclusions based on the test. One, people who are better at self-control actually enjoy the activities some of us resist, like eating healthy, studying, or exercising. So engaging in these activities isn't a chore for them. It's fun. One-two goals are more likely to be obtained than have two goals. One two goals lead to experiences of fewer temptations. It's easier to pursue those goals. It feels more effortless. If you're running because you have to get in shape, keyword have to, but find running to be a miserable activity, you're probably not going to keep it up. An activity you like is more likely to be repeated than an activity you hate. Number two, people who are good at self-control have learned better habits. In 2015, psychologist Brian Gallen and Angela Duckworth published a paper in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology finding across six studies and more than 2,000 participants that people who are good at self-control also tend to have good habits, like exercising regularly, eating healthy, sleeping well, and studying. People who are good at self-control seem to be structuring their lives in a way to avoid having to make a self-control decision in the first place. Remember that sentence. And structuring your life is a skill. People who do the same activity like running or meditating at the same time each day have an easier time accomplishing their goals, he says, not because of their willpower, but because of their routine that makes it easier. Remember that sentence. 
A trick to wake up more quickly in the morning is to set the alarm on the other side of the room. That's not in the moment. Willpower is at play. It's planning. Number three, some people just experience fewer temptations. Our dispositions are determined in part by our genetics. Some people are hungrier than others. Some people love gambling. Wink, wink, point at myself. And shopping. People high in conscientiousness, a personality trait largely set by genetics, tend to be healthier and more vigilant students. Wink, wink, not me. <laughs> when it comes to self-control, they, they won the genetic lottery. And finally, number four, it's easier to have self-control when you are wealthy. Uh, when the, marshmallow, the famous marshmallow test was repeated on poorer kids, if you don't know the marshmallow test, go and, uh, it's a self-control test, uh, go and research. It's a famous test where they uh, they basically tell a kid, it's a marshmallow or a cupcake, whatever it want to be, like, hey, you can have this one thing now, but if you wait a certain period of time, you'll have more. And it's a test whether they kind of give in to the instant gratification or they kind of think about the bigger picture and say, okay, well, two is more than one. I'll just wait my time and, and get two later instead of one. But uh, when they repeated the marshmallow test on poorer kids, uh, there's a clear, a clear trend. They perform worse and appear less able to resist the treat in front of them. But there's a good reason for that. Uh, as University of Oregon neuroscientist uh, Elliot Berkman argues, people who grow up in poverty are more likely to focus on the immediate rewards than long-term rewards because when you're poor, the future is less certain. Now, we can easily relate all of this to trading on numerous bases, and we're going to start with kind of the doing something you enjoy. Remember, it, it, it said in the article that want-to goals are more likely to be obtained than have-to goals, and it really goes back to picking your trading strategy. My trading mentor was a great teacher, great, 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 great teacher. However, we had slightly different mindsets. His mindset on trading was find a strategy that works, find something that produces you the most profit, and just do it, right? Think, think the, 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 the Shia LaBeouf meme, right? Just do it, just do it, where he's got the green screen behind him. But that was his, uh, that was his deal. And it was easy for him because he was ex-military. So you think about it, you know, you, you go into the military and he always told me that the first thing that happens when you're in the military is they basically erase your personality, right? You are no longer a person. You, know, you no longer have these characteristics. You are basically a body. You are a body that is built to follow instructions. So it was natural for him to, to, to take that. He didn't worry about psychological issues. He didn't worry about if he liked the strategy, if it messed with his philosophy. It was kind of a military mindset where it's like, hey, this is what works. Do it. Get the job done. And that works great. When I started teaching, however, what I started to notice, right, as I started working more closely with our traders is that it didn't work for everyone. And, and that's life in general, right? One, not to go off on another topic, one, one of the things I hate about the educational system, right, is they try to teach every student the same way, where everyone learns at a different rate. Everyone learns by different examples. You kind of have to adjust the curriculum to the student, but another rant for another time. But the same thing with trading, right? Not all traders are built to follow the same strategy. It really depends on your core beliefs. If you are someone that is, 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 is ingrained in the belief that the trend is your friend, that you should only invest or only trade in the markets in the direction of the trend, it's going to be very hard for you to be a counter trend trader because you're directly going against your principles and your philosophy every single time. Think about any task that you're doing, right? When, when you're forced to do something that you don't like, when you're forced to do something that you don't believe in, how much effort are you putting into it, right? Probably not as much. Even if you say you are, in, in the back of your brain, there's probably a part of you saying, whenever it doesn't work, see, I told you. I told you it didn't work. I used to trade a mechanical system, and, and I, I'm not a system trader at, at all, right? I don't like system, uh, I don't like not having that control. But I used to trade a mechanical system that I didn't really believe in. Now, I back tested, I, I, I went through the whole deal, and it was a very profitable system. But Every time it would take a trade, 
right? It, it would take some signals where I'm looking at it and I'm like, why would I sell there? But it gives me a signal to sell. When I would take it, it would lose. I'd be like, I told you. Like, I, I told you not to sell their system. So I didn't really believe in it. And, and, and those kind of lo- those cracks in the armor, as you go on, get bigger and bigger and bigger until you uh, eventually have a psychological breakdown. So fitting your trading strategy around your trading philosophy, around your personality is key because it's the only thing that's going to keep you comfortable, right? Another thing is, based on your motivation in in the previous podcast we talked about what motivates you what are you driven by why are you trading the markets and i've seen a a a direct relationship between traders that trade the market just because they want to make a lot of money versus traders that trade the market because they actually have a a passion for what's going on i love the markets guys and it's may, it, it may seem weird, but I would trade the markets even if I wasn't profitable. And I know you guys are shaking your head like, what, what, what? You're lying. Why would you say that? Easy to say that when you're profitable. Well, think about it like this. How many years was I not profitable? I was still trading, wasn't I? I was still that, that stupid trader waking up every day knowing he's probably going to lose money and doing it anyway. Right? It's like people that enjoy gambling or are addicted to gambling where they know they're going to go to a casino, they're going to lose money, but they just like playing the game. Like, I know I'm going to lose 500 bucks at the blackjack table, but I just like playing blackjack. Right? So it's a passion for me. It's a desire for me. Yes, I, I need to make profit to feed my family. Obviously, I, I want to make profit. But for me, when I look at the markets, when I look at a price chart each and every day, it's the game. It's the game of trying to figure out and solve this puzzle. Profit is just a reward. But I'm putting myself in a, in a situation where I want to come in and do something every day. I don't have to do it. I want to. And because of that, it, it's much easier for me to pursue my goals, much much more effortless, as, it, as I think I mentioned in the article. Another part that I found very interesting was, let me see if I can find it here, um, People who are good at self-control seem to be structuring their lives in a way to avoid having to make the self-control decision in the first place. And that goes back to, um, you can see I'm doing this off the cuff. I didn't didn't plan this at all. This is kind of how the podcast goes. If you're new, I just kind of wing it, right? (laughs) But going back to the previous example about your strategy meeting your personality, right? When you base your trading strategy off of your core philosophy, your core principles, whatever they may be in the market, right? You're putting yourself in a much better position, right? You're putting yourself in a position where you don't have to second guess yourself. right? When you do your back testing and you have your numbers and you know what your your system should produce, you're not putting yourself in a situation where you're asking yourself the question, uh, should I take this? Should I trade this? Shouldn't I? You're not putting yourself in a position where you have to kind of decide between entering entering early or not entering at all or entering late. You're putting yourself in a position where you have a fully developed plan. That fully developed plan meets your personality, meets your philosophy. And when the the trade signal comes, there's never any question of whether you should take it or not. It's all there for you. You're putting yourself in a position to consistently take good trades. Now, you still have to do it, and that's easier said than done. But there should be no back and forth. There should be no debate on should you this, should you do this, or should you do that? The answer is always yes, I should do this. Or a clear no, I shouldn't do that. And if you've done all the work behind it, you should put yourself in a position where it's very easy to come to that answer. The last one I want to talk on, because I think we're about 20 minutes already. I try to keep these things short, 15 to 20 minutes. But um, another sentence that stood out to me, I believe it was, um, uh, let's see if I can find it here. People who are good at self-control seem to be structuring their lives 
in a way to avoid having to make self-control decisions in the first place. And structuring your life is a skill. People who do the same activity like running or meditating at the same time each day have an easier time accomplishing their goals. Not because of their willpower, but because the routine makes it easier. Now, I ask you guys this. Have you, have you heard us mention this before? Have we ever talked about having a routine? Treating your training like a business? What do you think? All the time. Professional trading is a mindset. It has nothing to do with how many hours you spend in, the, in front of the chart. It has nothing to do with, with, with how much money you're making from the market. What matters is how you approach it. Do you approach it like a professional? And a professional develops a trading plan with a very strict routine. One of the biggest difference between successful traders and struggling traders is that struggling traders treat their trading like a hobby. Monday, they wake up maybe 7.30, hit the markets for a little bit. Tuesday, they sleep in until 10 o'clock, maybe check the markets later. Wednesday, they wake up 5 o'clock, right? They're doing something different each and every day. There's no rhyme or, or reason, no routine to their trading, right? Successful traders treat their trading like a business. When you go to work, your boss expects you to be at work at the same time every day. Many of you have a very strict schedule. The same needs to be done for trading. Here's when I wake up. Here's what I do after I wake up. Here's when I start my pre-market analysis. Here's when I trade. Here's when I take my break. Here's when I do my review. Whatever it may be, it needs to be developed in a routine. In general, humans, we're creatures of habit. So the, the, the more we're in a routine, the more comfortable we feel. The more comfortable we feel, the more confident we feel. The more confident we are, the better chance we have of doing the right thing in the market and really having self-control and, and being able to stare those, those bad influencers, those bad decisions in the face and say, not today, not today. For you guys familiar with the, the, the old NBA player, Dikembe Mutombo, boom, get it out of here. Shake the, wag the finger at it. Not in my house, right? Get it out of here. When we're comfortable, we're confident. When we're confident, we're powerful. When we're powerful, we can't be stopped. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, please do me a big favor and share the show. I'm still getting messages each and every week on Instagram, on Facebook, on the Twitter about people finding the podcast for the first time and binge watching episodes and really the the, the shift that it's made in their mindset and, and how they approach the market. So we're doing a great job out there. We just need to keep it going. The more we reach, the more we teach, the more we save. So share this on Instagram stories, on Facebook, on Twitter. Let me know where you're listening to this podcast at, whether it's Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, doesn't matter. And also let me know what you thought of the episode. Um, I try to make these episodes based off what you guys want to hear about. So I just want to make sure I'm doing a good job of that. So until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. I'm going to go work out and I'll see you guys next time.